today. I hope that you're having a really good day. If you're new to my channel, my name is Taylor and I come to you from Baltimore, Maryland. And on my YouTube channel here, I feature content that is focused on knitting and spinning. And in this brief video, I wanna share with you all my newest finished object that is the Herning Shawl. It is published, uh, the pattern is published in this book here. Um, the book is by Marianne Isigar, and it shares patterns of both her design, her mother's design, and this knit, Danish knitwear designer, um, whose name I am not sure that I can pronounce, um, but that is how it is written. And I'll just open up the book to show you the image that goes along with this design. As you can see, it is quite gorgeous. And it is a very simple construction, uh, kind of knit from the top uh, out in a triangle shape. I'll just take it off so that I can show it to you really quick. I didn't realize I had it tied behind my back. It's kind of, there we go. So I knit this using um, the same yarn that it is, um, that the sample, I knit this garment in the same yarn that the sample is knit in. It is one strand of Isagar's Spinny Wool One. So it's a single ply lace weight yarn and a strand of Silk Mohair uh, that's also lace weight, uh, that is obviously silk and mohair. <laughs> and um, it gives us gorgeous, I wouldn't say shiny, it almost looks a bit metallic uh, because of the silk. Uh, it, in On camera, it looks somewhat composition book-ish, uh, which I would say is a little bit more subtle in real life. It's not such a high contrast of color. And this is a garter stitch design. So it is very squishy and bouncy and because of the nature of the fibers, it has a lot of drape um, and what you do is you, you cast on here, you increase out until you've knit the full garter, <laughs> the full garter um, piece, and then you separately knit the lace border that you mattress stitch on. And I will say, if I had any regrets in making this design, it's that I pulled my mattress stitching quite tight. And so because of the nature of the garter stitch and the way that it kind of stretches um, in a lot of, in like basically any direction, the rigidity of the mattress stitch, if you can see here, sorry, my cat is feeling quite playful and she's going after my knitting tools. Um, but you can see how the, maybe the drape of the shawl is differing in the drape of the lace. And that is because of the tightness uh, that I used in, at, star baby, <laughs> I'm gonna have to put her down. Um, but you, you can see how the shawl kind of has a funny way of draping and that's because the tightness of the mattress stitch. I don't know if, you know, it's something that's so, Fundamental, I mean, the drape of your shawl is, I think, an important element of if, of its styling. Um, it took so much time to do. It took all day to stitch these pieces together. And I was meticulous in doing every single stitch um, and making sure that both sides were exactly the same. I don't want to have to redo it. Um, but I just know that the nature of this fabric is one that is always going to have a lot of give in its stretch, whether it's one direction or the other. And I mean, at the same time, you can position it in a way where it's it's very subtle that the drape is different from one piece to the next. Um, so I'm probably not going to restitch this and just torture myself because it's not exactly perfect. It's well enough. Um, but it's something I'm noticing. So if I were to do this again, I would do the mattress stitch still, but I would not pull it quite so tight. I would do so loosely. Um, there's a little bit of crochet to this design. So if crochet is intimidating to you, I would just learn how to do a simple, uh, single crochet in the pattern because it's not an English pattern. It does instruct you to double crochet. 
Um, but because I had crocheted long ago in my past, it is something I knew to interpret and, and Americanize the language and know that when it says double crochet, it means to single crochet stitch. And I confirmed that suspicion by looking carefully at the images to make sure that that's what I ought to have done. So there's some crochet to the top border, which I think is a really good touch. And I would probably do on other um, shawl designs that where you knit from kind of the top down, just to give it a really nice finished edge. It has a crochet border here. And then you'll also chain uh, for the strings and um, well you don't crochet for the tassel but you know you add the tassels to the ends of those strings. I actually didn't measure how long I made my strings I just made them as long as I thought they should be which is silly because they are just a little too short for me to wear this shawl in the way that it is pictured on the model. I'll open up that image for you real quick. So as you can see, she's wearing that shawl with it tied around her back and then over the front again. And um, I just don't see myself doing that. I didn't want it to be so long that the tassels would be down to my knees if I were wearing this shawl just open across the front. So I made them long enough that I could tie them in a bow behind my back. Um, but not, and if I wanted to, I could bring it around the front, but it would be, you know, just enough to cross it over and it fit fine, um, but not long enough to tie in a bow as it is here. So, you know, I maybe in retrospect, I will reference photos before I do the finishing touches on my future garments. Um, obviously this shawl is, um, not... A shawl collar but when you're reading the instructions it acknowledges that it does have a shawl collar and so I was confused by that because I wasn't quite sure how to wear it um, so I'm just going to wear it however I like and I'll just do a little modeling for you now I'll insert that footage here couple notes that I want to take care to mention are that this project took four of the 50 gram skeins of the Strict Spinny Wool One Yarn uh, that I purchased in the 23S colorway and just three of the 25 gram skeins of Isagar's Silk Mohair that I purchased in the 3M colorway. And this is a design that was originally published or I should say originally made in the 1880s, um, which apparently was the Herning era of, I'm guessing, somewhere in Denmark or the neighboring areas. I, I don't know a whole lot about Eastern Europe. If, if that isn't even in Eastern Europe, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I am, I went through the public school system of the United States, so I don't know a lot of the world. It's a little embarrassing. Um, however, uh, this book has so many gorgeous designs. I know that knitting from books can be somewhat of an investment. I am so accustomed to spending five or ten dollars here and there on patterns as they're published and it takes a quite bit more than that to buy a book. However, this is one with many patterns in it that I think would be an, a good investment. Maybe not the very best patterns for beginner knitters because um, Danish pattern writing is not as hand-holding as some of the newer kind of American style ways of pattern writing uh, where you go kind of row by row. This one kind of has written out paragraph 
explanations of doing this and at the same time do that and so it can be a little overwhelming if you're a brand new knitter um, but there's a couple patterns in this book I want to point out to you that I think are really inspiring um, the first is this one here it's inspired by hem knitting which is that row by row uh, geometric patterns or sometimes even um, shapes of everyday life things like chickens and hence the hem knitting name um, there's another one here that is gorgeous. This one is called Goose Eye. And I really thought I was gonna knit this, but I haven't gotten around to it. Maybe one day soon. I'm a little, in I was a little intimidated uh, years ago when I, per when I first purchased this book, but I feel like at this point now, I have enough confidence I could probably take on a design like that one. And there's a couple other really cool projects in here. I just wanna show really quick. So there's this hexagon plaid blanket design I think is really cool. I could see myself knitting this in something like a piece fleece yarn, uh, one that's just a little more affordable for me here in the United States. And then there's this interlock cushion cover that is really nice as well. I could see myself making this in like orange and gold or something really nice for the fall. I've been investing a little bit in some fall decor. I don't know if I've ever shown that to you here on my channel, so I might insert a little bit of footage of that here. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like it, do please give it a thumbs up. It helps me so much here in building my YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you ring the bell, you will get notifications for when I have new content uploaded. And of course, you can find me on social media as Taylor E. Owen, whether that is Ravelry, Instagram, or Twitter. Thanks again so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Take care.